There is a minimum speed. Each of you would ideally need grass to grow to just make sure you don't run out. So you have centimeters of compressed height yeah. and then you have a calibration and this is a tool that extension services often will have a calibration and I'm working with the University of Guelph, we're very close to having a calibration like within the next couple of years, we'll publish it. Yeah. So I, I would say, you know, here's how much you multiply your centimeters by and that turns it into kilograms per hectare, okay? okay? Um, because it's all made in the same factory. Yes, so we can trust that they should weigh the same. <laughs> Kilograms per hectare is about the same as pounds per acre. Very close. All the big yes. And you have tested these across the province in various locations. And we're continuing to do that. So that, yeah, that's the stage that we're at right now. We have a preliminary calibration that a grad student finished up this spring. We're now testing that on a bunch of farms across Ontario. So we don't have a calibration yet, but we're working on that. Okay. So if we pull this back into inventory management before we take a walk, um, there's lots of tools, some of them high tech, some of them low tech. How does this help us manage our grass? So we are talking about if we know how fast the grass is growing, we can start to manage before we run out of grass to help prevent us from running out of grass. So, there is a minimum speed. Each of you would ideally need grass to grow to just make sure you don't run out. And that number is going to be different on each of your farms because you have different numbers of livestock, different sizes of livestock, and different acreage that you're running. So, how fast do I need grass to grow? Here's your calculation. And luckily you only need to do this one once and then you know that threshold and then the measurement just tells you if you're above or below, okay? So, first part of the equation is animal demand per day. Just by show of hands, how many beef farmers have we got out today? A few? Sheep farmers? A few? Any dairy? Nobody pasturing dairy cows. Okay, they have a totally different approach. Theirs is a talk to a nutritionist kind of a thing. For everybody else, we have the same approach. So, for animal demand, you need to know the average body weight of the group that you're grazing and you need to know what production class they're in because different production classes tend to eat a certain percentage of their body weight per day. So we're on a sheep farm, let's say it's your dry use, okay? They're gonna be eating 3%, Anita? Right. Dry use, 3% of their body weight per day? Okay, so you'd take your average ewe weight, multiply that by 3% to get how much forage each one of those ewes is eating per day and then you would multiply by the number of views in that flock. Same thing, let's say we had a beef herd. Um, they'll say a beef cow on average over the course of the year, 2.6% of her body weight, okay? Stalkers would be 3%. Um, if, I know a lot of our pasture lammers tend to prefer like, singles are great, twins are okay, multiples are kind of scary. Um, but if for some reason you had ewes that were milking with multiples, you might wanna go for 4% of her body weight just to make sure that she's getting enough feed. So that's your animal demand per day. Average body weight multiplied by the percent of their body weight appropriate for that class of livestock multiplied by the number of head, okay? The other piece to this is your stocking rate. So that's how many animals per acre that you're running. So remember this is stocking rate. It's animals divided by the whole area that they get in their grazing season. We're not talking stocking density, which is how much space you give them at one time. Okay, density is the moment in time. Rate is the average over the season. So, how many ewes are you grazing and what's the acreage that they're grazing over the year? Right, 150 ewes. That. But do you call that farm in the Hollands? Like, do we count the, the decay ground that we're sending the lands to? Like, the home farm where the ewes never leave is... Say 400. Say 400? Okay, so we'll go with that because it's just the, the weaned lambs grazing the other? Yeah. Okay, so that would be a separate group over there. So, I know my phone doesn't have a calculator in it because it's a silly government phone. I just don't have a calculator. 950 ewes divided by 400 acres. 
2.375. Okay, so there's your stocking rate. So you would take that animal demand times the 2.335, 2.4 stocking rate, and that would give you the grass rate, the minimum grass growth rate you would need to keep up with livestock demand. So remember the measuring tools? Oh, the tool, the number that that tool needs to have. So, so not the calibration, but like if, so if you know that, let's say it worked out to be, you needed 30 pounds of dry matter per acre per day from your grass. When you go measure, if your grass growth rate is above 30, you're laughing, you got a surplus. If your grass growth rate is below 30 for one week, you're going, okay, grass growth is slow. We're gonna watch that. If it stays below 30, you know it's not growing fast enough to continue to keep up with how much the sheep need. Now you've gotta be proactive. So are you going to supplement forage on pasture? Are you going to pull them into a barn or a dry lot and feed them? Are you going to reduce demand in other ways by say weaning early or um, culling open animals that should be pregnant or whatever you're doing to reduce demand or increase supply. Can you pick up other acres to graze? So it's more giving you that early warning that you might have a problem before you actually run out of grass is the idea.